I thought I'd start off today with some good adjustments with my kids, get me in the zone, get me in the right position because we're coming off a Labor Day weekend. And though I've been talking chiropractic with clients and I've been uh, uh, down in New York City last week along with um, um, some other travels here in New York State, I haven't uh, uh, put my hands on anybody since uh, since Thursday. So uh, so I adjusted my family today. We've got a table here in the in the house as I showed you. And this is a, one of the tables I do a lot of my coaching calls uh, from. Uh, so I thought this would be fun to kind of do our uh, thought flash uh, from here today. One of the books I wanted to read from today real quickly was on uh, D.D. Palmer's. This is a Gary Street book. It was kind of explained to me that um, D.D. It, it was implied that D.D. really wasn't a well-educated guy. Uh, you know, I had this idea of him as kind of this frump, um, uneducated farmer who really didn't know much about anything. In fact, he was extremely... Um, uh, dismissed. Uh, the legacy of him was dismissed. The ownership of chiropractic uh, f uh, from DD was was separate. Was 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 taken away really. Um, and uh, so I never really got not even the not even the philosophy. We hear so much about the philosophy, but what I thought was really interesting, and I, I just want to touch base with it today, was on the principles before DD Palmer ever adjusted. Um, Harvey Lillard, and September 18th, 1895, her birthday's coming up, right? <clears throat> he had written principles. He was a magnetic healer. So Dee Dee Palmer had already written five principles, five uh, principles on chiropractic, though it wasn't called chiropractic at the time, but five principles of how the body worked before he ever uh, adjusted Harvey Lillard. Uh, Okay, so basic principle number two, which this is as as pertinent today as it was uh, back in 1895, 1893, actually. Basic principle number two. The vitality and activity of every organ, tissue, and cell of the body is maintained and controlled by an inherent force, an energy, which is transformed or individualized by the brain and then transmitted to these respective parts in the form of mental impulses throughout the channels provided by the nerves. I mean, that's that's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, again, you read that over and you realize that, again, you think of the times uneducated or, you know, un, not articulate, um, not really understanding what chiropractic is. It was accidental. It wasn't brought on with a, an objective in mind. And then when you read these over, you realize that it was extremely clear um, as to what he was doing. So the originator, D.D. Palmer, discovered the basic principle of an inherent force, which, in, which is named innate, which furnished energy to the uh, mental impulses. So, so there was an energy, innate, which then furnished the energy for the mental impulse. Mental impulse. Okay. <clears throat> basic principle number three. Love this. Okay, and this is chiropractic. And this is a, this paragraph can be used to explain chiropractic, as well and as clearly now as it was 100 years ago, right? When the transmission of mental impulses is normal, both in volume and rapidity of delivery. So both in the quantity, which BJ talks a ton about, right? Quantity, quality, frequency, life force, life source. Life force would be brain. In volume and rapidity of delivery, or in other words, the amount of energy which transmits an impulse that gives it force. Too much or not enough energy causes functions to be performed in too great a degree or a lack of degree. How many times have you heard it say there's one, there's one disease or two diseases, right? Too making too much of something, too little of something. So all functions are perfectly performed with a, with a result which is known as health. But when the normal flow of mental impulses is interfered with in any manner, the vital activities of the tissues and or organs which these mental impulses severely maintain is either increased or diminished starved, BJ talks about that in, in uh, Giant versus Pygmy, according to the degree of, an, an, of interference, the result in either case being a condition which is recognized as some form of disease. I mean, so I, I've been saying this for how long? Chiropractic, well, your brain basically sends information down, mental impulses down, and information comes back up. So when you lose the ability of that information, the body doesn't work as well, and disease, illness, sickness the forms in the body. I think that's awesome. Now, just to couple that with science, um, what I love about this is in principle number five, 
Chiropractic affords an exact, now this is his description of chiropractic, right? Chiropractic affords an exact and scientific method of determining the location of any vertebrae, which on account of misalignment is responsible for nerve impingement, um, blocking messages, and is done by the hand and using the spinous or transverse process of the vertebrae as handles or levers. So in that paragraph of what <clears throat> principle number five, describing what chiropractic is, is to become, he basically explains that the art using the spinous or transverse by means of, of the hand to adjust the spine to affect nerve impingement, affecting mental impulses, which is basically what? The philosophy of an exact science. The science and philosophy of chiropractic. And I love that aspect. So, you know, Jim Ma Jim, Ch Jim Jim Chestnut talks about the dagger in the back of chiropractic is that we're unscientific. And here we are back in the 1890s where, where the threshold, the description of chiropractic is first defined by the by the uh, discoverer of chiropractic, D.D. Palmer, as being scientific, a scientific method. And he describes it both in philosophical and scientific terms when he uses anatomy and physiology, which again, to read this paragraph or these few paragraphs, are as pertinent, articulate today, now as they were 100 years ago. And it just gives you an idea now when you start to read books on science and philosophy and you start to read neuropathophysiology about life force and life energy and mental impulses, they're using that same terminology that was once scoffed at or, or ridiculed, now those same terms are being used to describe what it is the body does and how the nervous system works. So when you listen to these neuropathophysiologists, that's the that's the terminology in which they use to describe what it is we do. So it's it's very exciting and it's exciting to look at the history. And then when you read uh, 1921 Medical Times, segment, uh, Sympathetic Segmental Disturbances, uh, you know, the Windsor Autopsies, it's very clear to see how when the spine gets sick, disease loses normal mobility, the sympathetic inhibition is dropped, therefore the sympathetics become overactive, and therefore it causes what? More sickness, more disease, more illness in the organs, and therefore the patient's die sooner. And there's almost 100% 100 cor correlation between the health or therefore sickness of the spine and the health or therefore sickness of the individual. And, um, you know, disease was, was forming or developing or had severely uh, or developed severely in those organs that were shown to be most sick upon the autopsy. So, you know, the science is there. Uh, we just need to have the courage the pride, the conviction, the certainty, and the clarity in order to describe it to people. Listen, guys, thanks so much for today. We're going to be in uh, Billy DeMoss's neck of the woods out in California uh, next weekend on the birthday of chiropractic with Brad Glowacki with the new patient Maven. Uh, make sure you guys are signing up for uh, CalJam. We'll be speaking there in February 2011. We've got our LaGuardia um, event coming up, a chiropractic consulting event coming up. That's going to be on the 24th, 25th. Any, anybody that comes that's, uh, that's coming in through our uh, thought flashes, their fee is half of our normal fee. It's normally $97, so for $45, bucks, you can come spend a day and a half with me and uh, learn more about chiropractic, uh, get some science. We're going to have Matt McCoy there from the Journal of Vertebral Subluxation Research. You're going to learn more chiropractic, more science, more clarity, more certainty. Certainly, we'd love to have you join our chiropractic movement and our team in order to move the needle of chiropractic Forward so we can make chiropractic the number one uh, respected and really utilized uh, health of, or form of healthcare uh, on the planet. Uh, we're also we've got an event coming up in Orlando, Florida. We've got Tom Carlton there, Dr. Tom Carlton, who's a functional neurologist, subluxation based. Um, something that's really going to blow your mind on the science uh, of what it is the subluxation is and what, what we do as chiropractors with the form of the adjustment. We're going to be in uh, Vegas in January, and they're going to be Billy DeMoss's in February, so at the, at the Cal Jam uh, gathering, if you will. It's going to be really exciting. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you spread the word and uh, certainly share our thought flashes with friends and family. Remember, guys, man, Nate flow from above down. Have a great week. My best friend gave me the best. Stay